Anyway, I moved down to Dublin and worked for a cutting horse breeding farm, a guy from Logandale, Nevada. Had 500 horses on 3,200 acres. Golly dang. And not a soul, had 18 employees, and not a soul down there that knew how to deal with a horse if they didn't want to be dealt with. <laughs> had one old, one old feller, uh, was a cowboy out of Nebraska, South Dakota, was my night watchman. He's an old guy, and he's kind of stole butt. But he, he folded the mares out at night, night watchman. He understood a horse, but the rest of them was all these new guys that didn't believe in whooping one if they needed a whooping, you know. But You better. <laughs> we, and we, I was buying reset mares out of Missouri, Amish people, and they'd send you a lot of them draft crossbreeds. Yeah. They don't yeah. like, they're gentle, but they don't like shots and stuff. And they just, once in a while, you get a hold of one of them and do something really stupid, you know. But I'll let, that lasted a year, and that's six months too long. I had to yeah. get back. My, what, what really surprised me is this was at, right out west of Stephenville, between there and Comanche. My wife had a job in Comanche, part-time job. She worked for the Farm Service Agency, and uh, she got on down there, and I told her early in the fall, I said, you better start looking for something back home because I'm, I'm not going to be able to stay here without killing somebody <laughs> that's right. and uh, and I shouldn't say that like that but well I, that's the truth well I, I mean not really I wasn't, but I wasn't getting along with some of the folks too good the, the boss in particular uh, anyway her job come open that she left Memphis and her job come open and she got it back and we moved back up here now they work rode the coats built all that stuff out there south of Clarendon and messed around for a while and I got Stove up. I didn't know for a long time I broke my back when I was a little old kid before I ever started grade school. Fell off a blooming tractor. I know when I did it, but I got to where I couldn't hardly go. Yeah. And uh, was it, I had arthroscopic surgery on one knee because I run over a tree and moved my kneecap one time. <laughs> uh, that's another long story. But they, uh, I went to work for the prison system at Childers to get some insurance. And I wound up working there 11 years, 10 and a half years longer than my wife thought I'd last. Uh, but Johnny it, has mellowed out. It, uh, <laughs> oh, it got, you know, I worked the buildings three years and then I went to the field force, which we're outside the horseback. And I might have still been there, but I'd been riding a horse four years and, Nobody said anything, they just took her and gave her to another guy. And she was the only one there that was worth a flip for anything. And I told them, if y'all do that, I won't be here. But I had enough time to retire. I mean, I vested in my insurance. and I'm mm. drawing Social Security now and that. I, none of my doctor bills cost me anything. You know, and... That's right. But I'm back. This man I'm working for now, I worked with his dad the summer I graduated from high school. He was in the second grade. And he's, he's Andy Wheatley, uh, worked for his dad, Earl. Uh, Andy was about the same age as my little brother. I was nine years older, ten years older than Andy, I think. Uh, he's a helicopter pilot, goes all over, gathering cows and shooting hogs and coyotes. And he's, he can work, dang near work around up that helicopter. I've seen him do it. I mean, he's pretty good at that. But, uh, and some of his old cows, some of that country he's got is bad brushy. And I, well, his mountain lions in there, what, them cows are just wild. And, you know, they'll feed and whatnot, but you go to messing with them, you can't gather them horseback. They can't get around in that brush. And he gathers them with the helicopter, and then we'll put them in a trap, and then we'll work them. But that works pretty good. And a lot of people are going to that because it don't take near so many people. Time, he charges $375 an hour but he can do more than two hours and 15 people can do in half a day. Well, then you're paying them, you yeah. know. You're I mean, paying them $150 yeah, a yeah, day. Well, yeah. you, you know, it's cheaper to use a helicopter. But you still got to have somebody to do the groundwork. But he can get out of the helicopter and do that, too, if he needs to. He, he's, well, he, he grew up doing it. Yeah, know, he's, so. he's really good, and he's good to work for. I mean, he's in Mississippi right now pollinating rice with that helicopter. <laughs> Just turned the ranch over to me. 
said, I'll see you in the middle of August. <laughs> Left about the 4th of July. He's really good to work for. Well, he knows you know. Yeah. And that makes a big difference in knowing somebody that knows. I mean, you know. Well, I, my dad taught me to work and, and kind of cursed me, really. I kind of like hard work. Uh, I don't sleep good if I don't work. But I see a lot that needs doing, that don't get done. And there's a bunch I've been letting go here because I've been working down been there. Working down there. <laughs> That's you right. Know. That's right. But I'm I'm gonna take off here a week or two when he gets back and get catch up on some stuff here. My daddy in law's ninety five. He still gets out and takes care of his cows and, and checks the water every day. He's not feeling real good right now. He kinda had a little heat stroke last summer. Uh and a mild heart attack, but he's not in the best of health, but he still gets out and goes. If he didn't have them cows, he wouldn't last long. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, but he's, <clears throat> and I've, I've been doing more for for him. I went and leathered the windmill for him the other day. I got two sections I got to put in a 10 foot mill. Go climb up on there and put that on there when I get around to it. But they took, this place here is partnership between us and him mm -hmm. and his wife. Yeah. She's 92, he's yeah. 95. Uh, we had this place leased and he come, told me, he said, Mr. Edwards wanted to sell that place, said he'd finance it for us. And I said, I can't afford that place. He said, you can't afford not to. And he's right. He's right. He was right. Uh, <clears throat> the way Mr. Edwards did it, the way Buford had him do it, worked out where I already had the cows paid for. Well, the cows just paid for the place. I've never took nothing out yeah. of the cows. I was yeah. still working at Lewis's in the 15 years. This thing was paid for. And then none of this stuff was here. This, we put this stuff here about 10 years ago. Uh, there's another thing my dad did good. He sold his farm and put that money in a trust for the family, for the kids. Mm -hmm. And that finished paying. When, when I put that house here, I had to refinance the land. Banker said, if you finance a house, you're going to have to pay for all these inspections. He said, just refinance your land and then you can build that house any way you want. You don't have to answer to nobody. But anyway, it, it, life's been good for me.